back, big boy. Sign the contract. <laughs> Welcome, 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 everybody, to Boxing Egos, The Roundup, where I give you all things boxing, boxing highlights, all the news stuffed in one central location, one convenient box. Got it all boxed up for you. Got a great show today. Make sure you guys subscribe. Canelo Alvarez, pay they, pay they, you'll want pay they, I know that. He is fighting Jaime Mugia. We already knew that. What some of you guys didn't know is the undercard because it was just announced this week. Canelo Alvarez, it goes as follows. Main event, this is going to be on PBC on Amazon Prime pay-per-view. You will have to order the pay-per-view. Of course, Saul Canelo Alvarez, the main event versus Jaime Mugia. Both guys come from... Mexico, and likely someone's getting knocked out if you know both of their styles. So that's a good fight. Of course, people are disappointed. They wanted to see Canelo versus David Benavidez. Canelo chose what he chose. So right now it is what it is. Benavidez is going to move up to 175 pounds and explore other options, likely on the Gervonta Davis card. So stay tuned for more on that. So the undercard was just announced. It looks like the co-main event. You have a WBC interim world welterweight championship. Mario Barrios versus Fabian Maidana. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. Some of you guys are like, wait, that name, Maidana, not Madonna. Maidana sounds very familiar. And if you watch boxing, it sounds familiar because Fabian Maidana is his brother also boxes Marcos Maidana, El Chino Maidana. And most people know him from the Floyd Mayweather fights. He gave Floyd such a competitive first fight that Floyd ran it back, gave him a second fight, which we know doesn't happen often in Floyd's career. He only did that with Jose Luis Castillo, who gave him a tough fight, and then Marcos Maidana. So this is the brother of Maidana, and, you know, We've seen these Argentine fighters from Argentina. They got a lot of power, a lot of courage. We just seen it recently with Richardson Hitchens. He fought a guy named Lemos. Guy was absolutely relentless. Mario Barrios, his nickname is El Azteca. So you know what he comes to bring. Great fights with Gervonta Tank Davis and Keith Thurman. And he looked very good with your Dennis Ugas. Now, speaking of your Dennis Ugas, one thing I want you guys to note, because some of you do not know this, but your Dennis Ugas was scheduled to be on the undercard of Errol Spence Jr. versus Manny Pacquiao. Um, I want to, I believe I will fight. He's going to fight me. Do, 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 do. Right? So a couple years ago, Errol was slated to fight against Manny Pacquiao. Errol had a detached retina he wasn't cleared to fight so that fight got canceled ugas was on the undercard scheduled to fight fabian fabian maidana again the brother of your dennis or of marcos maidana so since errol spence was ejected and was forced to withdraw with the eye injury they pulled ugas who was in the same weight class on the same card Again, he was scheduled to fight Maidana, and they pulled him up, and then he ends up beating Manny Pacquiao. So then Errol Spence went on to beat Ugas when he healed and when he came back from the retinal surgery, and then Ugas took a, about a year off, came back, and lost to Mario Barrios. So boxing is crazy. I just gave you factual, chronological order and this is the type of stuff that happens in boxing, so you just never know. One minute, Ugas was looking super dangerous. I thought he beat Sean Porter. Then, out of nowhere, he gets pulled from the Maidana fight, gets main evented when Errol Spence is forced to withdraw, beats Pacquiao, but then immediately loses his title to Errol Spence, and then he ends up losing again in a fight that people thought he would probably beat Barrios. And now Barrios is getting this opportunity. 
this is i'm happy i know barrios i'm very happy for him because i've seen the hard work from back in the days at virgil hunter's gym and now i mean he's fighting on the biggest mexican active fighters card as a co-main event so i've stated this several times over the thing i like about premier boxing champs pbc is winning is obviously preferred if you're a fighter nobody wants to keep losing however pbc is the best in the business just like when it comes to boxing i'm the best in the business and it's not even close pbc is the best in the business at doing this specific thing bringing you back into meaningful fights working you back up into the the picture so you can climb back up the ladder and giving you opportunities despite losing what do i mean you look at a guy like mario barrios and he lost to javante davis other promoters that are currently out when you take a loss like that because tank knocked him out gtd javante tank davis knocked him out and did a backflip that's what happened right so when you do these things and you lose in such a fashion some promoters end up either dropping you or you just drop really far down the the pecking order right and you don't you're not the you're no longer the priority right and that's what i've seen but pbc again they have this great way of getting you back into the rotation like it's not it's okay to lose you know of course you want to train hard and the better you hold account of yourself then you'll truly get more opportunities i mean if you're just losing and undisciplined or something pbc will probably be like to heck with you but if you're a fighter that you know you just got outgunned like i wouldn't be surprised if roley comes back and gets you know a good placement on a card or a good opportunity and that's what i've noticed from pbc right and I specifically noticed it with Mario Barrios. Barrios has had opportunities. Lost to Tank. You know, he comes back, moves up in weight, gets a Keith Thurman opportunity. His face gets messed up in that fight with Keith Thurman. And, you know, so that's a back-to-back -back losses that kind of got ugly. A few fights later, he's fighting Ugas, which was a dangerous fight for him. He comes out on top and messes up Ugas's eye after Errol Spence messed up Ugas's eye. Boom. Now you see him on the Canelo Alvarez card as the co-main. And again, this is Cinco de Mayo weekend. And you got a guy who has, when he walks out, Barrios has like the, the ensemble. And he, he pays a lot of like homage to his heritage, which is real cool. Also on the card, you have another WBC interim. They passing out these WBC interim belts like Skittles, but it's Brandon Figueroa versus Magdaleno. Brandon Figueroa, he recently moved up in weight. Magdaleno, veteran kind of guy. So that should be a scrappy fight with uh, a lot of punches being thrown in that particular division. And then finally, you have the WBA World Championship match with Amantis Stanionis and Gabriel Maestre. Now, that name Maestre, if you follow boxing, you should know it. Mikhail Fox had a very controversial fight with him. A lot of people thought that Mikhail Fox won the fight, but they gave it to Maestre. However, Maestre is a very tough fighter with power from Venezuela. Venezuela got some hitters, right? Another one that comes to mind is Ishmael Barroso. Ishmael Barroso, that's the old man that knocked out Ohari Davis and dropped Roley. And a lot of people were mad at the outcome of the Roley fight. So shout out to Venezuela. But Gabriel Maestre, despite the Mikel Fox, which I did think Fox should have won that fight. I've already made videos about that. He's getting this opportunity for the WBA. I don't know if it's the full belt or if Terrence Crawford still has it or if, if he's um, relinquished the belt, but that's what it says on the flyer. And... Amanda Stanionis, I feel bad for him because he's a quality fighter, quality operator, and he's been out of the ring for a while, and it's really not even his fault, people. Amanda Stanionis, the first time he had scheduled a fight with Virgil Ortiz, it was his fault. Not his fault, 
because it was like a medical emergency, but it was on account of his side. And that was because he had um, his appendix was about to burst. So he had to have an emergency appendectomy surgery. After that, he had, I believe, two more rescheduled fights with Virgil Ortiz and Virgil Ortiz. If you guys remember, kept pulling out of the fights, he would get closer and then he said he was injured or he said he was sick or rhabdo myosis or whatever was wrong with virgil ortiz so the fight kept getting canceled so you just have a guy who's been on the sidelines probably went through two three four camps in the last several years and has not had any opportunities very happy to see he's out of freddie roach's gym the wild card gym so i'm very happy to see that amantis stanionis is getting which could be a tough fight, even though Maestre doesn't have that many fights, but he's he's getting a great placement on the Canelo card, and he deserves it. Now, hopefully, Barrios, if he wins, because he'll probably be the favorite, and Stanionis, if he wins, maybe they could fight for like a consolidation. Or what I would love is Jerron Boots Ennis versus either Barrios or Stanionis because I read something and it said that Barrios was having a baby or something so he wasn't going to be available for Boots but then they put him on this card so I mean it is what it is but it is what it is that is the Canelo Alvarez card but wait there's more it appears that Kermel Moton will make a fast return on the Canelo baby Payday, you'll want payday. I know that Alvarez card. Cinco de Mayo weekend. And let me just tell y'all. Mayweather Promotions, they doing a hell of a job. Carmel Moton, absolutely. He's a young and hungry lion at the end of the day. And they keeping him very active. Furthermore, which really makes me happy and is exciting is the fact that you have Kermel Moton. He's literally 17 years old as of me recording this video. And his very last fight was an eight rounder, which I talked about on my Twitter. Make sure you guys follow me. Link to all my socials on my videos in the description. This man, young man, is 17 years old and he's already fighting eight rounders. Now, some people might not think that's anything, but I'm here to let you know that is pretty impressive. For comparison's sake, we have an Olympian in Shakur, Shakur Stevenson and very talented fighter. He signed with top rank, who's known for grooming, you know, amateur guys out the amateurs and whatnot. His first four fights, he turned pro in 2017. Shakur Stevenson, silver medalist, his first four fights were six rounders right similarly his boy Keyshawn Davis also an Olympic medalist and silver medalist Keyshawn Davis he signed with top rank as well and his first four fights when he turned pro were six rounders Carmel Moton for comparison's sake is not an Olympian and he's only in his third fight and he's already fought against a very game and really kind of dangerous opponent in Cuba who was a Leo Santa Cruz fighter that had, you know, some names in the gyms and stuff. And he's already fighting the eight rounder in his third fight. That's crazy. If you really think about it and how I just laid it out. So that was impressive. Also, something that people sleep on is anybody in boxing who is attached to the Mayweather name and the Mayweather brand, it's like they have an expedited path. We've seen it with Javante Davis. And, you know, obviously Javante Davis is doing his own thing now, but he came up in the Mayweather gym, got signed for his Devin Haney sparring, and the rest is history. So you can't tell me that Javante Davis didn't benefit early in his career from being kind of um, affiliated with Floyd Mayweather. And same thing with Kermel Moton. Premier boxing champions, they posted his fight with Cuba, which I labeled as one of the best, most terrific 
prelim fights that I can ever recall seeing. I'm talking about on the Pitbull, Cruz, Roley, Tim Zhu, Fundora card. This was like the opening bout, very early prelims. And this was, I've never, I don't recall, truthfully, seeing a fight that happened and occurred so early on the card, like the first fight of the night that was more cracking than this fight. So I think on top of being in the eight rounders, being in the eight rounder with the guy that he was in there with, Leo Santa Cruz's dude, Cuba, that's just a great, it's not like he was losing or anything, but he did get hit, hit with some shots. It's boxing, it happens. But I, I feel like fights like that, or like Richardson Hitchens versus Lemos, those will build your character way faster than you're fighting a no hoper and a scrub because it tells you something about yourself. And then if you get the dub and secure the win, then you move on and you can learn and grow from that fight as long as you didn't take too much punishment. And such was the case with Kermel Moton. He did good, he did very good, very exciting fight, beautiful combinations, impressive that in his only his third fight he's fighting an eight rounder against such a dangerous dude so they clearly have a plan for him and they're fast tracking Kermel Moton finally like I said Kermel Moton will be added to the Canelo Alvarez pay they pay they you want pay they I know that undercard so he just can this is he already fought on the Canelo undercard last year when Canelo fought against Jermail Charlo so he continues to get these big card opportunities and that's going to help him out a lot so clearly al Heyman and mayweather promotions and ellerby they have a great plan for kermel moton i also seen on premier boxing champs when they posted his fight that i'm telling you is a legendary prelim fight right great fight even from cuba the fight has in a few days amassed 400,000 views roughly right and then you look at the Premier Boxing Champs, their other recent uploads. There are other people that have been around like Danny Garcia or whoever else. And their videos were posted around the same time. And then you see this fight with Kermel Moton has like three, four times more views on that one fight video than some of these interviews and other fight highlights or full fights that they have posted on the page. So... I see big things in Kermel Moton's future. Hopefully, he takes kind of a lighter touch because his last fight was a guy that had provided challenges, a quick turnaround. You don't want to burn your best people out to the point where you just give them tough fight after tough fight after tough fight. You know, it has to be some slow down, work on some things type of fights. So I think they should slow it down, put him on the Canelo fight, match him, you know, maybe even a little bit lighter. Because for me, what I would love to see is... Carmel Moton on this Canelo card, put him in more of a tune-up style fight, and then bring him back for the Gervonta Davis Frank Martin card, which is shortly after that. So th he will be extremely active, which again is why you have to pace it. You don't want to put him in with killer after killer after killer after killer. It just doesn't make sense. But if he's going to be this active, this is the way to do it, especially early on in one's career. In other news... Puerto Rican champion at 140 pounds, Subriel Matias, who is the IBF champion. I like that guy. No diddy. He's an absolute goon. In a brand new interview with Mill City Boxing, he responded to Regis Progre. I guess Regis Progre said, even despite the Devin Haney loss, he believes he would send Subriel Matias to the hospital if they were to fight. Subriel Matias heard this and he begs Regis Progre for the opportunity and he says, we both know you gonna be the one going to the hospital. Roll the clip. Yo, Progre, when you see this video, this interview, please give me the opportunity to show the world, you gonna say I gonna send you to the hospital after the fight. Me, please give me the opportunity. Me, me, I'm gonna send you to the hospital, and you know it. Mm. Wow, he said, me, me, me. I'm gonna be the one 
sending someone to the hospital and it's going to be you. You fight me. And it's like that. Wow. Now, Subriel Matias, I believe he has a hometown fight with rematch room Eddie Hearn. He just left PBC and he's over there and he's about to fight Liam Paro. That's a pretty difficult fight. Let me know if you guys would like to see Subriel Matias. If he gets past, if he's successful versus Liam Paro, who just beat Montana Love. I was at that fight. Very good performance by Liam Paro. Heard good things about Liam Paro sparring. And let me know if that's a fight you guys would want to see. Matias versus, if he gets past Paro, do you want to see him versus Regis Progre, a former champion? Or do you want to see him fight Devin Haney's or Teofimo, who he's called out as well? Finally, Ryan Garcia admits that he's ready to go for April 20th and Golden Boy was forced to lower the ticket prices, which is exactly what I told you. We're going to get set up. I'll let you hear it first and then I'll get my thoughts to wrap up the video. So Ryan Garcia posted this. Hey guys, what's up? You know, as you guys know, I already finished my media workout a couple hours ago. Um, very happy on how it went. Um, I'm also here to update you guys, you know, back on TikTok. They uh, they uh, amped it up my lives again, so I'm ready to go there. Also, tickets are on sale still. So uh, they lowered the prices. So I want to let everybody know they lowered the prices. Let's go. He said they lowered the prices for my fight you guys you know back on tiktok they uh they uh amped it up my lives again so i'm ready to go there also tickets are on sale still so uh they lowered the prices so i want to let everybody know they lowered the prices let's go um so go buy your tickets uh if not the zone boxing live pay-per-view guys 420 let's get it as you can see i'm definitely ready i'm definitely ready let's go meeting so i'm ready to go there also, tickets are on sale still, so uh, they lowered the prices, so I want to let everybody know they lowered the prices. Let's go. Um, so go buy your tickets. Uh, if not, the Zone Boxing live pay-per-view, guys. 420, let's get it. As you can see, I'm definitely ready. I'm definitely ready. Let's go. Woo! No, for real, though, like, I'm going to knock him out. 100%. Let's get it. <laughs> hey, guys, what's up? Ryan looked kind of big there. So there you have it. Boxing Egos, the roundup. Now, I told you about the tickets, and I might even do a separate video breaking it down, but I've already made videos well in advance. I told you Golden Boy had the ticket prices too high for that event. Haney nor Ryan Garcia have ever had any of their previous fights where the ticket prices were so steep now ryan garcia is telling you what i've been telling you the ticket prices are steep they're not that level of a track this is not taylor swift this is not beyonce and jay-z at a concert or something like that where you could command that type of ticket price and also the location i said this stuff y'all said i was tripping they put two west coast fighters not one but two west coast fighters in new york in brooklyn and that's cool to experiment in different markets but typically i don't imagine you would do that for a big fight like for example if canelo alvarez is mexican and jaime Muguia is mexican and you have a lot of latinos on the card mario barrios we went over earlier in this roundup video barrios you have a lot of latino people argentina you have Madonna's brother, etc. right? Brandon Figueroa. Why would you put that fight in New York? It just doesn't make sense. West Coast, right next to Cali. I live in Cali. We got a lot of Hispanics, a lot of Mexicans, and a lot of Latinos. I'm in the Bay, but it's deep out here. But also, like, Stockton, you know, in NorCal, and, you know, Sacramento area, and of course, SoCal, LA. So it really didn't make sense to put a guy from Victorville and a guy from Henderson, you know, with roots in the Bay Area, 
put them in the Barclays Center. And on top of that, the ticket prices were high. So that's why Ryan Garcia is like, okay, let's go. We actually got the ticket prices down. And again, I think Golden Boy overshot that. They looked at, because they were partners, I guess you could say, with Ryan Garcia and Javante Davis in that particular fight. And they just assumed this was all Ryan's star power. This is what old media said. They said Ryan sold all the tickets for Javante Davis versus Ryan Garcia. They said it had nothing to do with Tank. These were all Ryan's fan base, and Ryan was the true A-side. We come to find out that is a lie. Point blank, period. A week and a half out until the fight, it doesn't have the traction that you would expect for a fight like this, and now Ryan's telling you, hey, go get tickets. Let's turn the energy up. They just lower the ticket prices. But I'll probably do a separate video because I like and enjoy telling you guys that I'm right. That's this episode of The Roundup. Subscribe if you like this. Everything compact. Many ways to support the channel. The link will be in the description. The Roundup.